Alright, I'm just going to do a video on the thoughts on the American team on the Ultimate Fighter. And um, why they're doing so poorly. <laughs> um, well, the most obvious thing is I think there's, there's, there's a considerable lack of talent. When you look at, um, well, for example, Jason Dent is either the best or second best lightweight on the team, I think. And the only guy that maybe is better is uh, Richie Winston, who I was not overly impressed with, but other people seem to have been, so I'm leaving that open to debate. Um, now, why am I bringing that up? Well, the last couple of seasons of the Ultimate Fire, they've been bringing back people who um, had previously fought in the UFC, such as uh, Steve Burns and Matt. There was there was a lot in the lightweight season. Joe Lozon, Matt Wyman, uh, Gabe Ruger. Um, but the thing is, all of these guys had something in common. You either thought they, they didn't have a lot of a shot at winning, like Gabe Rudiger, or they came in with like some impressive appearances in the UFC, i.e. Joe Lozon beating Jens Pulver. Uh, Steve Burns had, had, a, had a very good fight with Logan Clark um, in the UFC. If you haven't seen that one, go watch, because it, it really is an outstanding fight. And it kind of makes you wonder what was up with Steve Burns when he lost to Mir Sadala. Um, but moving on, or uh, even Matt Wyman, who had a pretty good showing against Spencer Fisher. Now, Jason Dent, although he lost two decisions in the UFC, one to Roger Huerta, one to Gleason Tebow, did not look impressive in either. I would say Huerta thoroughly uh, dominated him, which is not overly surprising because we all know that Huerta, although he was considerably protected by the UFC, is a considerably good fighter. And Tebow is just freaking huge for the weight class which is 155 that being said you really shouldn't be looking at Jason Dent a guy who's 0-2 in the UFC as possibly your best fighter in the weight division and it, it kind of shows a lack of like talent pool that they brought in and you know maybe this is that strike force and affliction are kind of Stepping it up and kind of bringing in some fighters, you know, the likes of, uh, well, you guys, you guys are just pretty much handed to him lately, but Rodrigo Dam, uh, Dan Lozon, uh, the guy down low, like a low blow by Bobby Green, I think. Um, his last name was Green, I don't know if his first name was Bobby. Um, maybe, maybe that's the cause, but this is just seems to be one of the weakest, you know, uh, talent pools I've seen on a team. Um, since the original Ultimate Fighter. And if you remember the story behind the original Ultimate Fighter, it's that, you know, they picked 18 or 16 fighters, and that's all they had to pick for them. That's why guys like Jason Thacker, um, guys like, um, I don't want to say Koscheck because, I mean, they've done, they've done the whole, you know, wrestler without much of an MMA record coming on the show before, and that seems to kind of work. Um, but definitely Jason Thacker, uh, definitely a guy like... Um, you know, you, you kind of think Kenny Florian might not have been, even though he's turned into a very good fighter. But you kind of think that he wouldn't have been on there. Uh, somewhat similar with Alex Alexis when you really think about it. Um, that being said, though, um, that, that ended up being a very good talent pool. But when you looked at it on paper, it wasn't a very good talent pool. Which paper lies, because if you go on paper, Stefan Bonner would have beaten Forrest Griffin just because of higher accolades. Supposedly better striker, better grappler. And, you know, most of that fight was striking. So, But still, you see, the, there's just, you know, when you look at you look at the eight-man team, and, you know, maybe maybe people feel differently about this, but I, but I look at it, the level of UFC-ready talent is um, a uh, week, week at best. I think there's there's three guys who I think could probably do something. That's Demarcus Johnson, Jason Dent. Although I think I think Jason Dent is ready, but he's he's a low level lightweight. Um, and people keep saying these things about Richie Winston, so I'm going to include him. But past that, you have Cameron Dollar, who I think really is a weak duck. Santino DeFranco, who's a proven weak duck. Um, Mark Miller has an obvious deficiency in his in his game. Um, which is 
wrestling basically. You'd think you would get better training at Hell House, uh, Gilbert Submission Academy, and uh, Midwest Comp, uh, Midwest Martial Arts Academy, I think that's what it's called. But anyways, it's like the Qua Clay Guidage, uh Chase BB area, where you'd think you know wrestling would be the thing he'd have, but he doesn't have wrestling. He has an okay ground game. Uh, it needs to make needs to have a better defensive striking game. He's kind of like Roy Markham, where he's got a lot of offense, but he's 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 bad at not getting hit. Um, so if you're gonna do that, you have to have a rock chin, and I don't think he does. And it's showing, you know, speaking of Markham, it appears he doesn't as well. So, I mean, not to, not to take away from the British achievements here. Because I wouldn't say this is the strongest British team you could put together, but it's a lot better um, overall, I think. Additionally, you had the addition fights where um, Dana White kind of kind of screwed the pooch by having uh, Kevin Knapshin and Mark Miller fight each other. Because I think it really took Kevin Knapshin out of his game. And I thought, when I looked on paper, Knapshin looked like maybe one of the better uh, welterweights for sure that they had brought in. He looked okay when he fought Brock Larson, um, who is a UFC guy, and I think it's what, two and one in the UFC? Three and one? I, think, I know he's beaten Keitaro, Nakamura, and uh, Jesse Saunders, I think is his name. And I know he's lost to John Fitch, but, and he also had a very good run in WC. So, you see, he, he may have been one. I think he would have beaten Mark Miller had he taken him down. Because that was the one weird thing I got from that whole fight. You had a guy who, although okay defensively on the ground, doesn't have a lot of offense, and uh, you know has somewhat suspect wrestling game, and you don't take him down. And it was kind of like Knapson was trying to make Mark Miller look good um, in case he beat him, and then they brought Miller back or, or something. And I think that led to his loss, actually. And another one would be well, another example, this wasn't matchmaking, this was just, well, referee stupidity got Santino DeFranco in. He got pulverized by Waylon Lowe, and that Waylon should have gotten in because, I mean, he, there was no way that fight should have gone to a second round. Um, Santino got messed up. Um, and another one would have been for sure Cameron Dollar because Tom Hayden, He's a pretty good fighter. I looked him up. I hadn't heard of him beforehand, but he does seem to have some pretty legitimate skills. Just couldn't finish Cameron. He basically, you know, completely wrecked him, and then Cameron pulled a backdoor escape and got a submission with a rear naked choke. Now, I, it, it's not a fluke victory, obviously. Cameron showed a lot of heart. He showed deter determination and grit and toughness, and eventually a pretty nice rear naked choke. But at the same time, you, when you really think about it, Tom Hayden probably would have had a better shot at beating some of the British fighters than Cameron Dollar does. Um, and then you just had, and, and the general quality was just not there. So before you take this as kind of a, a big thing for the UK to be winning, just take that into account. Um, I mean, the UK team has some guys, I'm, I'm really interested to see what they can really, really do. Um, because they, they don't have names that I recognize on their records. Uh, despite the fact that I've seen a couple of them. But like Ross Pearson looks really good. Jeff Lawson we know is really good. Um, he is, he's more of a, a known quantity. Um, James Wilkes is pretty solid. Uh, so is uh, David Faulkner. Although apparently beats himself mentally at times. I've, I've seen that having looked up his fights now. That he has these these moments when he's looking really, really good and then breaks somehow and loses um, kind of a... I had an, a, a person to compare him with that was more mainstream, but it, I've just kind of lost it now. I, I don't know why. Do um, you have anything else to say? Yeah, I also sum up with this has not been... This, I'm not really looking forward to the season of the Ultimate Fire because I feel like whoever wins doesn't have a chance to even really in the even really um, become a powerful force in either weight class. Um, I th this is one of those seasons of the Ultimate Fire where you kind of feel the guy will be, will be one of those winners that gets cut um, after a couple of fights, and that's not necessarily good. 
and I think you're gonna do the, they shouldn't have done the US UK thing if they thought that the US hiring actually good talent from the US would have made the show unbalanced or something and that's an upset and I'll peace out.